starts at 12. The night beat starts right now and we begin with a concerned father's actions raising questions tonight. He turned to social media after he says someone tried to kidnap his daughter last month, though he warned others online about the dangers of sex trafficking. Police were not made aware of the attempted kidnapping until later. The night team's Jaffney Gray spoke with Cibolo police who say this action could negatively impact an investigation. Somebody saw it and then they messaged our Facebook page and let us know and then we uh, opened an investigation from there. That investigation into an alleged kidnapping at this Cibola Walmart started January 3rd, three weeks after the alleged incident happened. Cibola police making this post stating they were made aware of the crime by a Facebook recording of a concerned father involved. Officer Matt Shima says they made contact with the father recently, who told them he wasn't there when the alleged kidnapping happened, but his family was. They went out to the parking lot. And at that time, somebody tried to grab one of the daughters, uh, release them, and then they went back inside and, and let their mom know. Shima says the incident should have been reported to authorities when it happened, which was December 22nd. The Facebook Police Department has solved no crimes that I'm aware of. So it does it doesn't does very little good to put things out on social media before talking to the police. He says there are many issues with turning to social media. It could cause panic and fuel false rumors. If the suspect can see that post, now they know to hide, they know to go somewhere else, they know not to answer the phone from the police or answer the door for the police. Shima says delaying a report can also also harm the investigation. Memory tends to fade right away. That's just who we are as humans as memory fades. And so if we can get that report, get it on paper as soon as possible, those little details can be remembered and that can help the investigation. Shima says the father, who was now actively working with police, told them he didn't report the incident because of his experience reporting things to police in the past fell on deaf ears. However, Shima says do not let that discourage you from doing what's right. No matter your history with the police or giving reports, we want to know right away here in Cibolo so that we can investigate immediately. Now, Shima says this investigation into this alleged kidnapping incident is still ongoing. He reminds residents that if you have any information that can help, you're encouraged to contact them directly through their smartphone app. The See It, Say It, Send It smartphone app. You can send your tips in through anonymously, but it's not just this incident. It's to any incident out there. If you see something, say something and do not wait. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. New on the night beat, a home familiar with firefighters, the site of yet another fire. Arson investigators called out to a duplex on the west side tonight on Simplicity Drive. The home is near Marbach and Ingram Road. A battalion chief on scene says he knows of at least four reports of fires at that home. A person found at the scene is also raising suspicions since investigators have dealt with him multiple times as well. Neighbors say they've seen several people coming in and out of that home. No injuries were reported. Officials did say the property is worth $85,000 and about $45,000 of damage was done. And multiple fires thousands of miles away, catching the attention of the San Antonio Zoo. Those wildfires raging across Australia tonight, the San Antonio Zoo president and CEO says the zoo is in talks about possibly sending staff to help care for rescued wildlife. The night team's Patty Santos telling us he's calling on a local celebrity. To make an impact. On Twitter, San Antonio Zoo CEO Tim Morrow calling on Spurs player Patty Mills to join them in formulating a plan to help wildlife impacted by the massive fires in Australia. We'll take any help we can get from anybody. Zoo VP of Conservation and Research Dante Fanolio says they're looking at the best way to support the efforts on the ground. Some 200 fires are burning across the continent that is surrounded by water. The loss of wildlife is devastating. If it turns out that sending um, trained staff is in the best interest of Australian wildlife, it, the package might include that. Right now, we're still in early enough stages where I, I don't, I don't want to commit to anything because, again, we want to make sure that what we do is most efficient. For months, the world has been seeing images of wildlife running from the flames. The koalas and kangaroos, the most recognized of them all, being rescued and cared for. Researchers estimate nearly half a billion animals have been killed. The wildlife that's found on the Australian island continent 
is mostly endemic, meaning it's not found anyplace else. As the fires continue to rage, the full impact of its devastation cannot yet be measured. But conservationists are worried about those animals with small geographic ranges. Those are the species we really, really worry about because a fire could sweep through and, and literally cover its entire range. I'm not saying that's happened. We have to wait and see. Unfortunately, this natural disaster is still unfolding. Fenolio is working with people on the ground in Australia to see how San Antonio can help and soon. We will hang tight and we will assist as soon as our Australian collaborators um, request it. And, and But I can see having a really firm plan in the next week or two. And 25 people have been killed in the fires. Experts say the extreme dry conditions have really contributed to the increase in the number of fires this year. The Sioux says they will announce their plan on social media, and we will, of course, keep you posted on what that plan is. Steve? Thank you, Patty. So many people wanting to help out there. To other news tonight, with the nation under fire, students and staff preparing for a worst-case scenario, a school shooting. A few minutes could be the difference between life and death, and it is one of the reasons why children as young as 12 will be taught how to stop excessive bleeding and keeping pe and how to keep people alive. At the beginning of this year, a new Texas law went into effect requiring two things from independent school districts and charter schools. Place bleeding control kits in the schools and train certain staff on how to stop the bleed. Just west of San Antonio Medina Valley ISD plans to offer training to seventh graders and above in the spring. Today, staff at Medina Valley ISD taught how to pack a wound, hold direct pressure on that wound, and how to use a tourniquet. It's good to know how to pack wounds like that, um, especially I having kids on the bus. Uh, you know, anything could happen at any time. Today's training for school staff hosted by the University Health System Employees at several other districts, including Fort Sam, Medina, Southwest, Southside, and Northside ISD have already been trained. The training for students in grades 7th and above, not mandatory, but districts are required to at least offer it. Tensions rising between the United States and Iran has many wondering if the U.S. is on the brink of war. Thousands of American troops are headed into the Middle East and military families are coping with the news. He was supposed to be only doing like training and now it has obviously transpired into something else. This after Iran's top military commander was killed in a U.S. airstrike last week. The streets of Iran filled with people mourning the death of their slain general. President Donald Trump has warned if Iran follows through on a threat of revenge, the U.S. will strike Iranian culture sites. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is planning on introducing a House vote on a war powers resolution to limit the president's military actions regarding Iran. Back here at home, an investigation now expanding when it comes to South San ISD's school board. The TEA, the Texas Education Association, already launching an investigation after the school board decided to reopen three schools which had been closed due to low enrollment. Athens Elementary, Kazan Middle, and West Campus High Schools all opened at the start of this school year. The Texas Education Agency... Like I said, association, it's the agency, had already launched a special accreditation investigation after hearing allegations that that school board moved to reopen the campuses without first receiving recommendations from the superintendent. Now, in a letter from the TEA, the investigation will also look into complaints that trustees may have violated the process when awarding contracts or during the procure procurement process. School Board President Connie Prado confirmed the board received the letter in a statement. She went on to say, quote, we have followed legal counsel's advice on every procurement agenda item. I feel confident the board was properly advised in any recent procurement issue, especially if the subject of their investigation is related to the reopening of our schools, end quote. Well, it's a reason you might be reaching for the tissues. A KSAT viewer shared this video from uh, with us from Canyon Lake. You can see just how much pollen is flying off those trees and filling the air. 
Ash Juniper, or as we call it, Mount Cedar, has people all over town sneezing, dealing with watery eyes and feeling congested. Dr. Ted Freeman says patients have been reaching out to him in droves for their allergies. He says for at least the next few days, the misery known as Cedar fever will persist. He says over-the-counter antihistamines can help some. Steroid, steroid nasal sprays, though, can be even better. And a few other tips I like to do actually is uh, keep my HVAC system uh, with new filters, but then also on circulate to really keep filtering that air inside your house. And it's always good to shower at night before bed. Otherwise, the cedar pollen that gets stuck in your hair, you're sleeping with it and it really gets to you. Anyway, uh, very high is the count again today with a count of over 28,000. You look at the last couple of weeks and it's been high or very high. By and large, the majority of the time, with one exception, and that was the second day of January. Now, we actually have a weak cold front that has moved through, and that's giving us a north wind. We all know this time of year, a north wind does not help when it comes to mountain cedar. A good portion and concentration of our cedar trees are in the hill country. Well, that's where the wind is coming from, so expect it to be very high again as we get into tomorrow. We'll talk more about this cold front and what kind of impact it'll have on our temperatures coming up in a minute. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the night feed, a new year giving a new perspective when it comes to the number of homicides in San Antonio and Bear County. The difference in how the numbers stack up. Coming up. And an ambush attack near the U.S.-Mexico border. A teen killed and a father left to live with the horrific outcome. It's coming up next on the night feed. A 13 year old boy killed after traveling to Mexico with his family. Investigators say it was an ambush attack near the border on Saturday. The boy's father says they were visiting family in Monterrey for the holidays. They had arrived or had traveled from Oklahoma. Family members say the teen was shot in both legs and died that night. The teen's mother, uncle and brother were also injured. They're now in stable condition at a hospital in Nuevo Laredo. The boy's father said he has no idea why he and his loved ones were targeted. In new numbers when it comes to homicides in San Antonio and Bear County, and while one agency shows a slight decline in the number of cases, the opposite appears true for the other. When it comes to the San Antonio Police Department, there were 107 cases of homicide reported in 2018. Just last year, those cases dropped by two to a total of 105 in 2019. Looking at the numbers for the Bear County Sheriff's Office, there were 13 homicide cases the agency worked on. By the end of last year, that number jumped up to for a total of 15 homicide cases in 2019. Also making headlines here at home, San Antonio Bike Share trying to figure out how to fill a $400,000 hole in its budget after a sponsor pulled out one year early. The nonprofit, which has operated under the name B Cycle and most recently Swell Cycle, learned last year it would be losing its title sponsor, Southwest General Hospital, in 2020. SA Bike Share's executive director says she doesn't know why the hospital's parent company, Steward Healthcare, decided to pull out of the three-year deal. The nonprofit wants to increase ridership and sponsorships, and while it doesn't currently get any money for our operations from the city of San Antonio, it is exploring that possibility. You can call them draining discoveries. San Antonio's Riverwalk, or at least a portion of it, receiving an annual draining and cleaning as crews clean up the area. At least one scooter near the Lexington boat ramp was found. There's also a repair needed for one of the gates, and crews drained the river from Josephine Street to Nueva Street for the operation. Biologists also on hand with the San Antonio River Authority, they got involved by removing an invasive species called the apple snail. I don't know if we have video of one of them in this particular piece, but they're huge. The plan is to have all the work done in time to refill this area of the river walk with water on Thursday. All right, let's take a live look at live cam right now. 63 degrees out there. And uh, we were talking during the break about these allergies. Yeah. Seems like everybody is suffering. I was one of those people who never thought I suffered from allergies until this weekend. So. Yeah. Well, and you spend enough time outdoors yeah. and you're definitely going to be more impacted mm -hmm. by it. And that's why I said earlier, it's important, especially for ladies with longer hair. That's a good tip. Yeah. Wash your hair and before shower you before bed. bed. It helps a lot. My mm -hmm. allergist uh, you know, gave us 
some of those tips in our family, and it, they seem to help Work a little well. bit. Yeah. yeah, better than how, sleeping with how it. How about guys right. with longer hair? Would that <laughs> Well, as well that would probably be a good okay. idea. Or just right, really I'm just nice checking. hair, right? <laughs> if you've got a really good mullet, too, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And kudos to you if you do, seriously. Yeah. Watch <laughs> right. the mullet. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's chat about Mountain Cedar and, of course, the season that we're in the thick of right now. And take a look at this graph here. This says it all. We are right in the peak of Mountain Cedar season right now, right in the middle of it. There we are. That white line indicates where we are. We still have some progress to make until we get back on the downswing in terms of those pollen count numbers for the mountain cedar. Usually it's done by Valentine's Day. That's when we're done with it. We can pack it up for the year and say, see you next December, January. But we're nowhere near Valent or Valentine's Day yet. So we had a cold front move through, a very weak one, a wimpy cold front, but it's enough to give us a north wind, which is not our friend this time of year when it comes to the mountain cedar count, because the highest concentration of cedar trees are in the hill country. And so whenever we get that northerly wind coming out of the hill country, it really boosts our cedar numbers. And we've seen that over the past few days. And well, I think we'll just reinforce it as we get into tomorrow. So this cold front has a drop in humidity along it. That's the only way you can really recognize this front. You don't always have to have a big temperature difference in, or, in order for it to be defined as a cold front. It really could just be a moisture difference, dry on the back side and muggy on the front side. And that's what we're seeing right now. You switch over to temperatures and, you know, it's actually cooler out ahead of it. Look at Corpus Christi at 58. Meanwhile, we're 63 here in San Antonio. This is one of those cold fronts that uh, is defined by a moisture gradient across the boundary, not a temperature difference, that's for sure. Kerrville's 53, 53 in Fredericksburg and hanging on to 64 now in Del Rio. Obviously not a real hard hitting front. You look farther to the north and you know, we're in the 40s in Abilene, 43. Amarillo, Lubbock at 35. So yeah, noticeably cooler, but not a big hard hitting front like some of them that we've seen over the past couple of months. Now fronts often can give us a chance of rain, give us enough lift to maybe kickstart a few showers. Unfortunately, this one, it's not doing that. We have some high thin clouds uh, coming in from the southwest, completely unrelated to the front really. So uh, nothing in terms of moisture with this. It'd be nice to get the rain for obvious reasons uh, because we could use a dent in our drought, boost the aquifer, but also wash away some of the pollen. Here's a look at our rain chances though, and they're Better by Friday, but still at this point, only about a 30 to 40% chance. That's when we have an increase of humidity Thursday, Friday, and our next cold front hitting. So there is some hope by the end of the week. Until then, so pollen moving through the air and no rain to wash it away. All right, so early tomorrow morning, 39 in Hondo at sunrise, Kerrville 33, as cool as 26 in Junction, but for the most part, I think we'll be hovering right around 40 degrees for a good portion of South Texas. Then by the afternoon, we all make it into the 60s. Comfortable, beautiful day, sunny and 66. So we'll go from 41 here in San Antonio in the morning at sunrise to near 60 at noon to 66 in the afternoon. So maybe a sweatshirt for the kids at the bus stop, but by the afternoon, you won't need it. They'll be packing it in their backpack, hopefully remembering to bring it home. Yeah, we, we, we parents say that from experience. Uh, and then Wednesday, we do it all over again, but a little bit chillier in the morning. Thursday and Friday, humidity is actually going to be back in the air, so maybe some morning fog and sprinkles, but the chance of some late day storms actually with our next cold front Friday. That'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much, Adam. All right, putting a twist on an old saying, I'm happy to say that tonight, the Bucks stopped here. Yes, they did. And what makes it so, so, I guess, frustrating for Spurs fans, if the Spurs played the way they play tonight every night, yeah. they'd beat any team in the NBA. Tonight, they beat the best team in the NBA after losing to them just a couple of days ago. When we come back, we'll show you how they did it. And the Cowboys get their coach. Coming up. There you go, Longhorn fans. Sam Ellinger is coming back for a senior season at UT and Big Board Sports, but first.
DeJounte Murray is back with a quick rematch with the Bucks after he missed the Spurs' loss in Milwaukee on Saturday, 127-118 for personal reasons. Not tonight. Against the best team in the NBA, the Spurs came ready to play. DeMar DeRozan helps jumpstart the Spurs with a three after being down 11-4 to start. DeJounte is back with a three of his own to get the Spurs their first lead, 15-13. How about Derek White, who drives inside for the floater, Spurs up 27-22 after one. Now in the second quarter, Patty comes alive to get this to rattle in. Up now 59-44, timeout Milwaukee. Walking next possession, DeMar kicks it out to LaMarcus Aldridge for the corner three and the lead at the half, 65-52 to the second half. Giannis Antetokounmpo cuts the lead back down to six in the third quarter, but the Spurs respond. Bryn Forbes to Jakob Pertl for the one-handed slam. Spurs are up 77-69. Patty strikes again with another three ball. He finished a 21 off the bench that included six three-pointers. Going into the fourth, the Spurs lead by 10-91-81. DeMar led the Spurs at 25, including the turnaround and the paint, and then it's DeJounte to LaMarcus for the exclamation point. And the Spurs beat the best team in the NBA. And the Bucks lose for the first time this season to a team under 500, 126 to 104. Great team win uh, overall. Uh, I think, you know, everybody that got to uh, get in the game today, you know, came out and, and fought hard and, you know, executed the game plan uh, on the offense and defense end. We got to stay confident. You know, we got to stay together. And you got to believe uh, in this lead. You got to believe in your teammates. So if you believe in your teammates, and that's from the first guy to the guy, the last guy, uh, you know, great things to happen. All right, next up, road trip to Boston on Wednesday. Patty Mills is a champion for his native Australia that is now a country in crisis. Wildfires have consumed an area twice his size. Maryland already claimed 25 lives, consumed at least 2,000 homes. Patty is from Canberra, which is one of the hardest hit areas affecting family and friends that still live there during shoot around before tonight's game. Patty told us he feels it's his responsibility to make people aware of the devastation, admitting it's tough to watch while in Texas. What people don't really understand uh, just yet is is how much of an impact it's hap is is happening, um, how big it is, and uh, that it's it's not stopping, um, and that it it will continue to to get worse and to get bad um, as the temperatures rise. Um, it gets hotter um, and continues to get drier. Our prayers are with the people and the large amount of wildlife in Australia affected by the fires. The Cowboys have got their new coach next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Jason Garrett is out. Mike McCarthy is in as a new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. A former Packers coach confirmed today he had signed with the Cowboys after two days of interviews in Dallas, including staying at the home of Jerry Jones. It's reported five-year contract. McCarthy has had the playoff resume Jerry Jones is looking for that includes making the postseason nine of his 13 seasons in Green Bay, leading the Packers to a Super Bowl win in 2011 at Jerry World over the Pittsburgh Steelers and ending the Cowboys season twice in the postseason, 2014 and 2016. McCarthy has made his first move on his new Cowboys staff. Rod Marinelli is out. Mike Nolan is in as a new defensive coordinator. Marinelli is now 70 years old, spent the last six seasons as a defensive coordinator for Dallas and has not made a decision on his future. Nolan comes to the Cowboys from the Saints, where he was the New Orleans linebackers coach. While the Cowboys are hiring new coach and coaching staff, the Houston Texans are headed to the second round of the playoffs where they'll have to face Kansas City on the road this Sunday afternoon. Their chances of making it to the AFC Championship game come as nine and a half point underdogs against the second seeded Chiefs, now looking for their first ever trip to the conference title game. I'm extremely special, but it'll be even more special being in the top four afterwards. You know what I mean? It's going to be a challenging game. Um, we know that they're going to bring their best, and we're going to bring our best, and I think it's going to be a hell of a show. All right, Wade Phillips has been fired as a defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Rams one year after the Rams won the NFC Championship and made it to the Super Bowl. It was Wade himself that took to Twitter to make the announcement that his three-year contract with the team was not going to be renewed. Ironically, the loss of the Cowboys or the Rams gave up 44 points, helped seal his fate. The same Cowboys that Phillips used to coach before Jason Garrett took over, and now he's out. UT quarterback Sam Ellinger took to Twitter tonight to announce he has decided to return for his senior season in Longhorn land. There's been speculation he might make himself available for the NFL draft. What with head coach Tom Herman hiring a new offensive coordinator, but he says he's staying for, as he calls it, Chapter 4. A lot of Longhorn fans breathing a sigh of relief tonight. Yes, the final chapter hasn't been written yet. Not yet. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. 
We'll start your Tuesday around 40 degrees, sunny and 66 into the afternoon. So a cool morning leading to a very sunny and comfortable afternoon. We do it all over again on Wednesday. Then by Thursday, Friday, you'll notice humidity in the air. It's something we're not accustomed to over the past few months, but it'll be in the air and that could lead to even some late day storms by Friday. Hoping for some rain from them at least. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Adam. That's it for the night beat. By the way, at six o'clock, I can tell I've been off for a while because I said world news is up next. I remember that. Really at 5 o'clock, <laughs> but I do know GMSA starts at 4.30 in the morning.